Hello, I'm Julius Green. I'm a theatre producer. But I can handle it. <laughs> so, philanthropy and entrepreneurism are becoming the new buzzwords. Could it be that the Arts Council is preparing the ground for a radical reduction in its contribution to the theatrical economy? The good news is that the so-called commercial sector has perfected a methodology for securing funds from individual philanthropists using the language of investment. This system existed a long time before the Arts Council was invented and shows every sign of being likely to outlast it. In reality, commercial operators have long been aware that theatre is not an intrinsically profitable activity. They are understandably cagey about statistics and publish neither the box office returns nor the profitability of individual productions. But a Theatres Trust report in 2003 claimed that 90% of West End shows do not actually make any money for their investors. The fact is that the economics of West End productions are such that they can often continue running for a period of time without recouping any of their setup costs, and the business model is such that they do not need to make a profit in order for producers to make a living. As soon as the Arts Council was launched, non-profit distributing companies became the norm for attracting its support. Indeed, savvy commercial producer Binky Beaumont immediately created a vast business empire based on the interface between the profit distributing and non-profit distributing sectors. And, as the legendary Broadway impresario Jerry Schoenfeld frequently reminded us, there's no profit like not-for-profit. Just ask the National <laughs> Theatre about profits. <laughs> so, as certain actors like to say, what's the motivation? Well, the primary motivation of all the commercial theatre investors I know is supporting creative endeavour. As with any arts philanthropist, their decision to invest is based on their enthusiasm for the work and on their faith in the skills of certain creative individuals, not on spreadsheets. <laughs> the only difference is that they effectively have a lottery ticket stapled to their investment agreement, which gives them a very small chance of making their money back with a profit. They appreciate, as well as anyone, that the easiest way of becoming a millionaire in the theatre business is to start out as a multi-millionaire. <laughs> For this reason, commercial theatre investors are unlikely to be high roaming city types. They are mostly genuine theatre enthusiasts who simply enjoy a high-risk gamble on the thrill of the chase for the next big hit. They are also arguably the biggest source of subsidy in British theatre. Because producers do not publish each show's financial results, we simply can't quantify the millions of pounds in investment that are lost by the commercial theatre sector every year. In recent months, we've seen several major musicals expire without recouping a penny of their production costs, and that's just for starters. Alongside those are the numerous small-scale plays and musicals that do a respectable little run and then disappear off the radar without repaying anything to their investors. Is the annual value of this lost investment equal to the Arts Council's input? Or does it, in fact, exceed it? Nobody knows. But in any event, it is a major and largely unrecognised source of subsidy to the industry. All that investors take out is a share of profit on the statistically rare occasions when that occurs. But let's not underestimate the value of what they put in. Arguably, we don't have a subsidised and a commercial sector, just two differently funded subsidised sectors. <laughs> These practitioners worry that a reliance on individual investment stifles creativity, but there is no shortage of people who are willing to invest in interesting and challenging theatrical projects and savvy theatre investors enjoy taking a risk on the unusual. Similarly, it is often said that investors are only interested in the bright lights and star-studied first-night parties of London's allegedly glittering West End. Not at all. I've successfully financed numerous fringe shows on this model. In, reali in reality, it's often more than possible, given the variables involved, to present exactly the same project as a potential loss-maker in order to induce funding or is it potentially profitable in order to induce investment? Is your glass, or indeed your auditorium, half full or half empty? 
Do you want to fill in forms and tick boxes, or take a few people out to lunch and infuse them with your vision? <laughs> when you get back to your office, try restructuring your last Arts Council application as an investment proposal. The results can be surprising. Playwright Simon Stevens is on record as saying, it is urgent that state subsidised theatres continue to stage work that is not going to find an audience. <laughs> That's what state subsidy is for. Although I do rather wonder if he's changed his tune since seeing the size of his royalty checks. <laughs> in any event, to me, there is not much point in putting on theatre without an audience, and it should be possible in most scenarios to cover your costs if you sell enough tickets. So, in effect, all you're looking for is a group of fellow enthusiasts with a bit more money than you to cover the financial risk on your behalf. And there's much fun to be had along the way. At the end of the day, I prefer knowing that financial support for my projects come from fellow travellers who I can enjoy a drink with rather than faceless committees. The Arts Council appears to be trying to dismantle the culture of dependency on the resources that they themselves have created. But the current generation of theatre practitioners is being urged to fundraise from philanthropists, then I suggest that the terms and language of fundraising in the subsidised sector, and indeed its business models, need radical adjustment in order to facilitate this. You can't just write begging letters with one hand and hold out the begging bowl with the other. You have to engage high net worth theatre enthusiasts with your creative aspirations on an individual basis and, most importantly, give them a chance of winning if you win. Our friends in the Arts Council can sense that philanthropy or investment, as we commercial producers call it, <laughs> is a rich source of potential funding to replace their own diminishing reserves. But they themselves understand neither the language nor the methodology of securing it. Don't get me wrong, it's lovely having an Arts Council that supports theatre with taxpayers' money, and it currently underpins a vital part of our theatrical economy. But let's not forget that it's only been around since the war, and that theatre nurtured by individual patronage has been thriving since Roman times. Commercial producers have been raising money from angels since God was a child, and are more than happy to share their skills with their currently subsidised colleagues. But of course, as we are running a business, not a charity, we would have to charge for the information. <laughs>